Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for the Strider plugin in Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at the orientation warping node, what it does and how to set it up and we'll look at all the settings and see how we can modify it. So here is the orientation warping node in my test setup and let's just show you straight ahead what it does. So we've got this one animation input as um, at the start and we can ignore all the other nodes for now because they all have their default settings which I'm going to do nothing. And what we can do is we can tr change this direction input on the orientation warping node to essentially change the direction that the character is moving without changing the direction they're facing. And effectively we can turn this uh, single animation into a strafe animation by changing this setting. Uh, now you can see it's being clamped at something like 60 degrees here and that is a setting not a limitation you can change that setting yourself as i change this uh, direction it changes if we have um, four or even two animations you can get a full 360 degrees of strafing without using a blend space now why won't you want to use a blend space well there's two reasons one's performance Blend spaces have to evaluate the weight of every single animation and then it has to blend those actual animations. So there's a bit of a performance benefit here. And also blend spaces with strafe sets often result in a foot crossover or rather leg crossover where the legs actually go into each other at a certain point. And this is very difficult to uh, work around. Because there's no blending of animations, no destructive blending here, we can just um, get the full 360 degrees, no problem, and it looks pretty good. So that's the direction, uh, the orientation warping node in a nutshell. Let's uh, open up a somewhat blank graph and set this up from scratch. Okay, so let's quickly set up the orientation warping node in a somewhat blank animation graph. If we go to the warp heading and we add an orientation warping node, we can plug in the poses and there's no conversion this time because it's a local space pose. Let's uh, get a direction variable, which is just a float and plug that into direction. Now, before this is going to work, we need to set up some settings in the details panel. The first is the root bone. This is the bone that is going to be rotated to rotate the entire character uh, for orientation warping. Then we need to specify the spine chain. And for this particular character, which has a gun, I want them to be fully rotated in the direction they want to go by the time they reach the, um, the top of their spine. Therefore, the gun will still be facing forward. So let's add three bones there. And the first one is going to be spine one, spine two, and spine three. Now make sure there's no gaps in this uh, spine chain, uh, otherwise it won't work. So I'll compile that and we should be able to orientation warp here just fine. We can see it's capped at 60 degrees and that comes from this max warp delta. So this basically caps the amount of warping, but it also stops the direction from updating within the node if it's outside of that delta. And the reason for that is at runtime, when we switch to a different animation, we don't wanna be using a different direction for every single animation. We wanna use the same direction and say we switch to a backwards moving animation, it's gonna start trying to flip around as it blends and we don't want that to happen. So when it's outside of its range, it's 60 degrees uh, range, left or right, it doesn't update that direction. That might not make complete sense, but if you have a look at the very last tutorial of this series, I'll show you how to set up an entire graph with these nodes, and that'll probably make a little bit more sense. So let's have a look at what else we have here. We have a smoothing option and that's set to negative one by default and that means instant. So if I change the direction to 60 degrees, um, our character should change. Oh, let's make it, uh, I've set the max warp delta to one and you can see how it didn't update. So let's change that back to 60. So I'll set the direction to 60 and, or negative 60, um, negative 45. And you can see how the change is instant. If I set this to say 50, 50 degrees per second, let's make it something like 180 degrees per second. And I say I go to 45. You see the character rotates smoothly from one direction to the other. Most of the time you probably don't want to use this. You probably do want it to be instant and you want to probably change your um, character controller to turn smoother uh, if you want to do that instead. So most of the time leave that as negative one. So in our inputs, we have this upper body alpha, and it's basically the same as this alpha, but just for the upper body. If I set it to zero, 
you're going to notice that uh, when the character moves, the upper body does not twist back to the front at all. If I set it to 0 0.5, you'll see that our character does um, turn a little bit. You could sort of move, the, change this so that if you have a run animation and then, then you switch to strafing, you could ramp up this upper body alpha. Either way, it's there for you to use as you like. The first input setting here, which says offset, is extremely important for this to know to work in a game environment. And that is because some animations we have are already moving in a different direction to what we're facing. So let's grab one for example. Uh, I've got a jog right rifle animation and I'll plug that in. And you can see that the character is moving to the right, so that's 90 degrees to the right, but he's facing forward. So the problem here is our direction is zero and zero means we're moving in the direction that we're facing. And we don't wanna have different direction values for every single animation. We wanna calculate that once and use it for all of them. And therefore we need to offset this in the opposite direction of this animation. So our right uh, strafe is a 90 degree uh, right movement. Therefore we need to offset in the opposite direction, so negative 90 degrees. And therefore, when we are at negative, uh, when we are at 90 degree direction, our character is going to move straight. So if I change the value from there, we can actually move from that value. And therefore we can keep the same direction value in the same direction calculation, calculating the difference between the facing that we're going and the facing that we want to look at. Um, we can ha have the same value and just a different offset for each animation. So that's pretty cool there. And that's gonna work same for back. You're gonna have an offset of a negative 180 or 180. And if for a, right, a, a left, you're gonna have an offset of 90. It's equal and opposite to whatever your animation is doing. So that is the offset value. Uh, pretty simple, but very, very important. I'll plug in my normal animation there again. Okay, so what else do we have? That's actually it for the stride warping node. Very simple yet very, very powerful node. Again, watch the last video tutorial or download the example project to see how I actually set this up in a full 360 degree strafe. And you can see it's very diverse. We can get a lot of animation happening with very few actual sequences. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial where we'll take a look at the slope warp node.